ala ibadihi alladhi astafa amma ba'd so um assalamu alaykum so we were doing the um the section previously on naskh and on what, what is known as mukhtalaf al hadith how to reconcile between different types or two hadith or more which there are contradictions between them and imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani rahmatullahi alayhi says that there are a number of hermeneutical strategies that we can use in order to be able to get out of this ikhtilaf between the two, two riwayats. Number one is jama', number two is nasikh and mansukh, number three is tarjih, and then number four is tawakkuf. And then in today's sabaq, Imam Ibn Hajar says, thumma al mardud. As for the mardud, as for the rejected hadith. So what does it mean by as for the rejected hadith? What it means by that is that hitherto, what we have been studying all of this time, we were studying things related to the maqbul hadith. Remember we mentioned that as long as a hadith is not khabar mutawatir, then it falls in the hukum of ahad. And if the hadith falls in the hukum of ahad, then it is either maqbul or it is mardud. And then from the maqbul, we have um, things which are mashhur, aziz, and gharib. And these can either be sahih or hasan. And then we looked into the different gradations of those. For example, you have sahih li dhatihi, you have sahih li ghayrihi, you have hasan li dhatihi. And then we, within them, we looked at the maratib. For example, if the book, if the uh, if the hadith is muttafaq alay, then that is of the highest level. If the hadith is then found in Sahih al-Bukhari, and then number three, Sahih Muslim, and then number four, that is which is muttafaq ala shartihima, number five, muttafaq ala shart al-Bukhari, number six, muttafaq ala shart Muslim, and then number seven, we looked at um, a hadith from all uh, other books. We also looked at compound terminologies. For example, when Imam Tirmizi says, Hada hadithun sahihun, uh, hasanun sahih, hasan and sahih, they are contradictory uh, uh, descriptions and therefore a hasan and sahih cannot be. So we looked at uh, the different theories on that. Then we looked at the discussions related to ziyada to thiqah. Ziyadah to thiqa is primarily maqbul and therefore it is within the discussion of maqbul. Then we looked at the discussion of shahs versus mahfuz and uh, munkar versus ma'roof. Again, these relate to which hadith should be accepted maqbul and which hadith should be uh, rejected. And then finally, we looked at the question of mukhtalaful hadith or mu'arada. And Imam Ibn Hajar has given us four hermeneutical strategies, jama', naskh, tarjih, or tawqaf. So that is kind of the khulasa of the section on um, the, the maqbul hadith. Now we go on to the section of mardud. Is that, is that okay, um, Hussein or Omar? Yes. That's okay as a khulasa? Yeah, it was a great summary. Okay, so now we go on to Mardud. Okay, now if we come back to the um, the terminology or, or the conditions of the Sahih Hadith. Okay, the condition of the Sahih Hadith is Adalatul Rawi, Dabtul Rawi, Ittisal Sanad, Adamul Shuzuz, Wa Adamul Illa. Adalatul Rawi, Dabtul Rawi, Ittisal al Sanad, Adam al Illa, and Adam al Shuzuz. That makes a Sahih Hadith. If there is a slight drop in one of those conditions, for example, if there is a slight drop in Dabtul Rawi, then the Hadith is rendered as Hassan. Now, Mardud is basically the opposite of those five conditions. If there is a problem with one of the five conditions, the hadith becomes mardud. 
Now, there is one point here that I would like to mention, and if you can understand that, and you, if you can um, kind of process that in your mind, then everything that comes later on will be quite easy to understand. Although, although mardud means rejected, rejected basically means that it's not acceptable, it comes in opposition to maqbul. Mardud here is just a heuristic term. It is an overarching um, term to indicate that there is a problem with the hadith. And now that will cover the entire gamut of the types of mardud or defects from the most extreme, which is the uh, the hadith of a liar which has to be rejected to minimal defects which can still be used, which are still maqbool and then can be used for amal. Okay, but these all come under mardud. So mardud is not a diehard kind of terminology that every hadith that comes under mardud, they are rejected. Okay, every hadith that comes under mardud, they are rejected. No, it is just a heuristic device to loosely categorize um, uh, and to indicate that a hadith is weakness. Now, depending on the intensity of the weakness, the hadith is either accepted or the hadith is either rejected. Does that make sense? Yes. Omar. Yeah, but why why do they call it um, mardud if we use some of the you know weak hadith, like for example, in, in virtuous deeds and things so like they, that? They, they use it mardud in the sense to show that there is a weakness in there, whereas they can't call it uh, they can't include it within the maqbul because within the maqbul they've only included the uh, sahih and the hasan. You see. Uh, everything which falls below the level of Hassan will be on the level of Mardud. But Mardud is, like I said, it's a heuristic device. Do you know, do you understand what it means by heuristic device? Right. It's uh, it's like something that's um, helping it's not, you. It's, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's helping not, you to understand, but it's not kind of like a, a, a diehard firm firm terminology. Right, it's just a right. way of way of categorizing for the sake of kind of like uh, categorization. Does that make sense? Right. Makes so sense. you will see you will see that there is um riwayats uh where it has somebody who's got a uh, minor lapse in memory. Okay. A person with minor lapse in memory, this is hadith is are, are tolerated and accepted, providing there are certain conditions met. But that falls within the mardud. A person who is Ahlul Bid'ah, the person's hadith is tolerated. Uh, with certain, all of these are with certain conditions, but still it comes right. within the mardud because we can't classify them with uh, uh, in maqbul because when you when we put them in the maqbul, it shows that they don't have any defects in them, right? So the right. so the mardud is a heuristic device in order to categorize everything that has got defects, whether we accept them for amal or not depends on the intensity and the gravity of the weakness. Does that make sense? Got it. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I think if you can process that, uh, then it'll be quite easy because later on they'll say, well, this this is accepted and this hadith is not. And then you're thinking, why are we talking mardud if this hadith is accepted? Mardud Shaykh, is just would, a heuristic device. Would it be um, accurate to say it's more of an art than a science well, in terms I mean, of the uh, category? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, the... Um, uh, yes, it is. It is not a. I mean, the entire ulum al hadith is a science. It's not a science. Right. It is an art. But here, it's it, it's 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 like an art as well, if you want to call that. Okay. Right. right. Wamujib mujib from aujaba yujibu means to obligate something. Well, mujibur rad basically means the thing that obligates the uh, rejection. In other words, the causes of rejection, yeah, is two. It is either there is a problem with the isnad, imma ayyakuna li min isnad, either there is a omission 
and drop in the isnad aw ta'anin fi rawin or there is a criticism in the rawi right ala ikhtilafi wujuhi ta'an um uh, based upon the different criteria for criticism now here all five um, weaknesses in all five of the terminologies is being um, demonstrated. Okay, remember we said Adala to Rawi, Dr. Rawi, Itisalu Sanad, Adam Shuzuz, Adam Ulla, other conditions of a Sahih Hadith. By saying Imma Ayakuna Lissikatim Minan Isnad, Imam Ibn Hajar is showing that there is a problem with the Itisalu Sanad. And when there is a problem with the Ittisal al-Sanad, then that hadith falls within the category of Mardud. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Number two is Awta'anin fi Rawin. Uh, and when there is a criticism in the Rawi. So remember we said either the uh, Adala to Rawi, the character of the Rawi, or Dab to Rawi, or the erudition of the Rawi. Right. Mm -hmm. If there is a problem in the Adalat Rawi and the Dabtur Rawi, then this is known as um, uh, uh, it, it, this is a problem in the uh, it, Isnad. Okay, this is a problem in the Hadith. But Imam Ibn Hajar uh, um, did not say Ta'anin uh, uh, Ta'anin fil Adala or Ta'anin fil Dabt, but he just said Ta'anin fi Rawin. Mm. based on the different ways of criticizing a riwayah. And the reason why he said rawin rather than adala, specifying ta'an fi adala rawi or ta'an fi dabt rawi and then adding this ala ikhtilafi based on the different ways of doing wuju, uh, of doing criticism is so that he includes um Adam al-Illa and Adam al-Shuzuz, or in this case, the presence of Illa or the presence of Shuzuz. Okay, um, uh, and he explains this. He says, "A'amu min ayyakuna li amrin yarjiu ila dianat al-Rawi aw ila dabtihi." It is more a'am. It is more extensive. So, what is more extensive? So he's saying, "Aw." This sentence is more extensive, it's more uh, um, inclusive, um, it's more inclusive than to point out faults in the character of the Rawi or the erudition of the Rawi. Because you know we said, he could have said, إما أن يكون لسقط من إسناد أو طعن في عدالة الراوي أو طعن في ضبط الراوي، right؟ and that covers three of the of the uh, of the five. but by saying طعن في الراوي على اختلاف وجوه الطعن، he is including عدالة الراوي، he is including ضبط الراوي، he is including علل، and he is including شذوذ، because <laughs> by saying وجوه الطعن you are also including uh, criticisms related to shuzus and also related to ilal, um, okay? And therefore, mm -hmm. by these uh, two, إِمَّا يَكُنَ لِسَقْتِمْ مِنْ إِسْنَادٍ أَوْ طَعْنٍ فِي الرَّاوِنْ عَلَىٰ إِخْتِلَافِ وُجُوهِ الطَعْنِ He is including all five conditions of the Sahih. Mm -hmm. so does that make sense? Yes. Yes. So nowadays you will get some scholars like Sheikh Nasruddin Al Albani, rahmatullahi alayhi. Um, you know he when he does isnad analysis and he does hukum of of hadith, primarily um, he is doing hukum of a hadith by looking at the first condition min isnad. Sikhtimin Isnad, or by looking at uh, if there is a fault in Adala to Rawi or Dab to Rawi. Okay, this is what we called Abta'anu fi Zahiri al Isnad. Okay, but um, what Sheikh Albani doesn't do uh, because he doesn't have the technical expertise to do that is he does not criticize or he does not look into the ilal of the ahadith. Mm -hmm. And this is not me saying, this is Sheikh Ahmad Sunobar. 
he's a great scholar um, of, uh, from, uh, from Jordan. Um, he actually writes this and he says, if we look at the types of uh, um, criticism that Sheikh Albani uh, does, then, you know, he, uh, out of the f- five conditions of the Sahih, uh, he only um, engrosses himself with three because the Adam al Shuzuz and Adam al Illa is actually much more subjective and it's much more deeper and it takes a lot more expertise to be able to detect because it, it is subtle. So uh, he is somebody who can, you can say, is criticizing Zahir al Isnad, but he does not look into the Ilal. And Imam ibn Hajar here is preempting this and he says, by saying this, he's trying to preempt that there will be people who will just look at Adalat al-Rawi, Dabt al-Rawi, and Ittisal al-Sanad, and they will forget the Adam al-Shuzuz and Adam al-Illa out. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. فَسَقْتُ إِمَّا أَيَّكُونَ So now we go with the first one, which is uh, a sakt. Sakt basically means an omission or a drop in the isnad. So if mm-hmm. there is a saktun fil isnad or sakt min isnad is the opposite of ittisal al-sanad. So he says, فَسَقْتُ إِمَّا أَيَّكُونَ مِنْ مَبَادِئِ السَّنَدِ مِنْ تَصَرُّفِ مُصَنِّفٍ أو من آخره أي الإسناد بعد التابعي أو غير ذلك أو other than the two that the drop and the omission in the isnad is either from the مبادئ السند it is either from the beginning of the isnad and and the beginning of the isnad is the portion of the isnad that starts with the author for example like Bukhari the end okay. of the Isnad is the part of the Isnad which ends with the Prophet. So, although oh. from the point of view of who is the author of the Hadith, the beginning of the Isnad is the Prophet, then the Sahabi, then the Tabi Tabi'i, but for the point of Hadith Isnad analysis, we say that the beginning of the Isnad is the point of the author, and the end of the Isnad is where the Mutan uh, sits. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, because sometimes it gets confusing which is the beginning and which is the end. Mm-hmm. So the beginning of the Isnad is the point of the point uh, which is from the Musannif, for example, of Bukhari. So if there is a drop in the Isnad, min mabadi Isnad, from the beginning of the Isnad, min tasarrufi musannifin, and it is done by the author. It is done by the compiler. So let's say it's Imam al-Bukhari. He is um, the author. And he is the one who is doing the drop. Okay? So in uh, so either that, or the omission is at the end of the isnad, after the tabi'i. Okay, after the tabi'i. So after the tabi'i, naturally, it's the sahabi that comes. Then after the sahabi, it is the prophet sallallahu But here we are stopping short on the tabi'i, and that's where the and then the sahabi is missing. This is called a sakt fi akhir al isnad. Does that make, make sense? Yes. Or other than these two. Other than these two will basically mean in the middle of the isnad. So it's mm-hmm. a logical categorization. You either have a drop in the beginning of the isnad, or you have a drop in the end of the isnad, or you have a drop in between. Okay, and they have different technical. So basically, is the concept of this uh, breaking of the ittisal, where that break happens and how it happens. We categorize them into um, different names. Okay, but all of them can come under the ambit and all under the category of um, inqita. All of them can come under the category, the linguistic category of inqita, but be, be, uh, due to where these this inqita happens, we give it technical terminology. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, I'm just going to get my uh, pen out. Just give me one minute, okay? No um, problem. My pen is in the, the room, so let me just mute.
Right, so what I need is the whiteboard open. I'm going to go off camera because um, no problem. Really looking up at my face um, when I'm writing. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So, um, so we were looking at, let's say this is a Musannif. Musannif, right? Yeah. Then you have, oh. It disappeared. <laughs> Not sure what happened there. Imam al Bukhari. Rawi. Can you see this? Yep. Yeah. So if yep. we have a break, no, oh, actually. Let's put another person in there so that will make things easier. Rowie, 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 Tabiri, Sahabi, Rasul. So if we have, we can either have a break here, or mm -hmm. I'm going to use different colors here. We can have a break omission here, mm -hmm. or we can have an omission anywhere here. Yep. Mm -hmm. These are all omissions. Right. This one, if there is a break in the beginning of the Isnad, it's the this is called Al Mu'allaq. Mm. If there is a break at the end of the Isnad where the Sahabi is missing, this mm -hmm. is called Al Mursal. Mm -hmm. And if there's break anywhere else in the Isnad, this is called. Al Munqati'. Mm -hmm. It didn't come out right. Al Munqati'. Yeah. Al Mu'allaq, Al Munqati'. Mursal and Mu'allaq. However, there is one other special category. which is when there are two rawis missing consecutively, yeah, consecutively when there are two rawis missing, this is called al-mu'dal. Mu'dal from the word adal, which basically means complicated. Okay, so what mm. we have is all of these fall within the ambit of in Qita'u Sanad. Yeah. Linguistically, mm -hmm. in Qita'u as Sanad, which basically means a drop in the Isnad, as opposed to Ittisal mm -hmm. Sanad. Right? In Qita'u Sanad. If it's in the beginning of the Isnad, then it is known as Al Mu'allaq. If it's at the end of the Isnad, it is called Mursal. If it is anywhere else in the middle, it is munqati. However, if there are two isnads, uh, two uh, rawis missing consecutively, then this is called al mu'dal. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, we will get we will get back to this again. Mm -hmm. Fasiqtu imma. Okay, 
فالأول المعلق سواء كان الساقط واحدا أم أكثر So if there is a split from the beginning of the isnad it doesn't matter whether there is one uh, uh, a, a sakt, there is one uh, uh, omission or more then this is called muallaq so as long as you start from the um, the author if the drop is happening consecutively from the author then that is called muallaq so for example mm-hmm. If I was to give you a um, an example of muallaq, what is it? Muallaq, let's say Bukhari, Rawi, Rawi, Rawi. Tabi'i, Sahabi, Rasul. Right. So if we have this will be a this will be a right, this is omitted. And then Bukhari is narrating from his teacher's teacher, and he's omitted t- his teacher. This is called Mu'allaq. Yeah. Mu'allaq mm-hmm. can also be this Bukhari. Uh, Bukhari, he is um, omitted two p- uh, teachers and he is the one that's doing it. This can also be a mu'allaq. This is mm. also a mu'allaq. Wow. This is also a mu'allaq. Right? <laughs> and so so what will Bukhari say here? Qala Rasulullah So this is what we say. This is what we do. We're always doing mu'allaq. Uh, when we mention a hadith, we say the Prophet ﷺ said, قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ 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 إِنَّمَا yeah. الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ When we're dropping the isnad, this is actually mu'allaq, ta'liq. Okay? And mu'allaq is a sign of weakness. Mm-hmm. It's a, a sign of rod. Not, not when we do it, because I, if I say, قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم then everybody knows, and I say this hadith is in Bukhari, then everybody knows that Imam Bukhari has got the isnad for that. So although I am narrating the hadith mu'allaqan, what the hadith has got an isnad. So it's not really um, it's not really a big deal if I narrate a hadith uh, without the isnad. Does that make sense? But if yes. Imam Bukhari was narrating a hadith, uh, uh, remember all of this relate to Asr al-Tadween. Now, if Imam Bukhari right. alayhi, was narrating a hadith without isnad, and he doesn't provide an isnad for it, then that will be problematic. Or he misses a few people out. Unless he has uh, mentioned the uh, that hadith somewhere else in his book, or he we all know, but the muhaddithin know that there is an isnad for this hadith. For example, many a times, what Imam Bukhari does in his Sahil Bukhari is that he will use a hadith, uh, the words of a hadith as chapter headings. So, Babu Maja'a, and he will use actually a word of hadith, but that hadith is not either according to his condition or is not Sahih according to him. So, he will not use the hadith as a Sahih, uh, as a hadith in the book, he will use it as a chapter heading. Now, and, and it's exactly the wording of the hadith. So for example, he uses a hadith, um, you know, found in Ibn Majah, but he uses it as Babu Majah, you know, etc., etc. Now, he knows it's a hadith, and the ulama know it's a hadith, but he's using it muallaqan, because he's not actually using it as a hadith. But that hadith, has a sanad in another book, uh, which is Ibn Majah. Although Ibn Majah, um, he, 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 he postdates Imam Bukhari, obviously, but um, Imam Bukhari knew that hadith. But that hadith now is found in Ibn Majah. Does that make sense? So this is this is what it means that um, we're looking at the Asr of Tadween, and if a narrator during that time was to bring a hadith, 
and they didn't bring an isnad for it, or they missed out some people, they missed out some people uh, from the beginning of the isnad, then this will be called mu'allaq. Because how how do ulama uh, then um, uh, kind of analyze the hadith? Does that make sense? Makes sense. What, which books would we most likely fa- find uh, mu'allaq hadith in? Because it's obviously not going to be in the sahih books, right? Since the narrations are are authentic in those books. Unless, I guess, is there... Yeah, I don't know. That's my question, I guess. Um, uh, the, the idea is that in the Asr al-Tadween, in the Asr al-Tadween, every single ahadith needs to have an isnad. Mm-hmm. If the isnad is... Uh, is not found for a hadith, then the hadith is deemed to be weak because how do we, um, you know, how how, how do we um, ascertain whether this hadith is sahih because if this nad is missing? Okay, so this is the, this is the assumption. Now, the ulama have mentioned a hadith without isnad. For example, Imam Bukhari, the Mu'allaqat of Bukhari. Imam Bukhari has many ahadiths which are Mu'allaq. Like I mentioned that he uses them as chapter headings and he didn't give the isnad for them. So it is uh, later scholars, for example, Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani, um, he then will uh, look at all of the Mu'allaqat of Imam Bukhari, rahmatullahi alayhi, and then he will find isnads for those. Um, uh, those Mu'allaqat of Bukhari and in fact one of the very very first books that Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani wrote was called at uh, called Ta'aliq Al-Ta'aliq right um, Ta'aliq Al-Ta'aliq is basically his work he wrote when he was 30 years old around his 30s on the Mu'allaqat of Imam Bukhari and that's the book that actually threw him in the limelight and the ulama they saw that he is writing on the Mu'allaqat of Imam Al-Bukhari and his his um, Imam Bukhari didn't tell us what those isnads was. He collected all of those isnads, um, so he became famous. Called Ta'aliq Ta'aliq. Similarly, Ima, there is a concept called Balagatul Malik. Balagatul Malik means Imam Malik just says Balagani. He has reached me, and he misses out the isnad and directly anyways from a Tabi'i or from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Latest okay. scholars like Allama Ibn Abdul Bar um, ha, took it upon themselves to. Um, find the isnads for all of the balagat of Imam Malik, right? So it's not that the, um, the, 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 the there wasn't an isnad, it's just that this was the style of the scholars. Um, they felt no need to give the isnad at that time. But if the they did a had if they produced a hadith which is mu'allaq, and nobody in this world. Uh, was able to find an isnad for that hadith, then that hadith would be deemed uh, da'if. Does that make sense? God, it makes a lot of sense. Thank you for the explanation. Okay. فَالْأَوَلُ الْمُعَلَّقُ سَوَاءٌ كَانَ أَسَّاقِتُ وَاحِدًا أَمْ أَكْثَرُ وَبَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ الْمُعْضَلِ الْآتِي ذِكْرُهُ عُمُومٌ وَخُصُوصٌ مِنْ وَجْهٍ And between the Mutlaq, between the mu'allaq and the mu'dal. What is the mu'dal? The mu'dal is the one where there is two narrators consecutively missing. So Imam uh, Ibn Hajar Asqalani is saying between the mu'allaq and the mu'dal, there is an umum khusus min wajhin narration, uh, uh, relationship. Umum khusus min wajhin relationship is that some mu'allaq, so there is a general to specific relationship between them in certain cases. And what those certain cases is that certain mu'allaq are mu'adal and certain mu'allaq are not mu'adal. Okay, but there are instances where both of them get together. For example, in this, in this, um, you know, can you see my mouse? Yes. In this really in this isnad, what we find is that there is no relationship between mu'allaq and mu'dal, right? Mu'allaq is the mm-hmm. uh, missing from the beginning of the isnad, 
and Mu'adal is two rawis which are missing. But if we were to uh, do it something like this, right, if we were to do the, let's take a different color, um, light blue. Right? Mm -hmm. Imam Bukhari misses out the first rawi and the second rawi. Yeah. Then we will say that this isnad is simultaneously mu'allaq and mu'adal. Mm -hmm. It's mu'allaq because the beginning of the isnad is missing. And it's right. mu'adal because two isnads are consecutive. Two rawis are consecutively missing. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So he says that. وَبَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ الْمُعْدَ الْأَلْآتِ ذِكْرُ عُمُومٌ وَخُصُوصٌ مِنْ وَجْهٍ فَمِنْ حَيْسُ تَعَرِيفُ الْمُعْضَلِ بِأَنَّهُ سَقَتَ مِنْهُ إِثْنَانٍ فَصَاعِدًا يَجْتَمِعُ مَعَ بَعْدِ الصُّوَرِ الْمُعَلَّقِ وَمِنْ حَيْسُ تَقِيدُ الْمُعَلَّقِ بِأَنَّهُ مِنْ تَصَرُّفِ مُصَنِّفٍ مِنْ مَبَادِئِ السَّنَدِ يَفْتَرِقُ مِنْهُ إِذْ هُوَ أَعَمُّ مِنْ ذَلِكَ so, uh, we see that from the point of view of the definition of mu'dal, that it is where there is two or more are uh, consecutively missing. Uh, it can uh, it, it, it collate together in some circum circumstances with the mu'allaq, like we have done here, that two are missing. And because it's the bidai to senate is mu'allaq and because there's two missing is mu'adal. وَمِنْ حَيْسُ تَقْيِيدِ الْمُعَلَّقِ بِأَنَّهُ مِنْ تَصَرُّفِ مُصَنِّفٍ مِنْ مَبَادِئِ السَّنَدِ يَفْتَرِقُ مِنْهُ And from the point of view that the... Um, وَمِنْ حَيْسُ تَقِيدُ الْمُعَلَّقِ بِأَنَّهُ مِنْ تَصَرُّفِ مُصَنِّفٍ مِنْ مَبَادِئِ السَّنَدِ That from the point of view that the condition of mu'allaq is that it needs to be done uh, by the author in the beginning of the مِنْ مَبَادِئِ السَّنَدِ In the beginning of the sanad يَفْتَرِقُ مِنْهُ um, the, uh, the 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 mu'adal is um, different than that. Is huwa a'amu min dalika because the mu'adal is more uh, um, more general than the mu'allaq. The mu'allaq basically is that it has to be narrowly confined to the beginning of the isnad, and the musannif needs to be doing that. Um, whereas the mu'adal uh, is that it is? It can be found anywhere else in the isnad, and mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the author that is doing the drop. It might be somebody else. So, if we right. were to give you an example, for example, if I was to give you an example of uh, again, Imam Bukhari, and we'll put Ra here for Rawi, Rawi. Rawi, Sabi'i, Sahabi, Rasul. Right. Um, let's say that there are two people missing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, two people missing here is Mu'adhal. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessary that Imam Bukhari is the one who's making the drop. It can be this this rawi here who's making the drop, drop, right. or it can be this rawi here who's breaking the uh, making the drop. It's not necessarily Imam Bukhari who's making the drop. Whereas in the case of Mu'allaq, Mu'allaq, it is the Musannif who has to be making the drop. Does right. that make sense? Makes sense, yeah. That's what he's saying. So basically saying that there are instances where a mu'allaq and mu'adal will uh, will uh, coincide and there are instances where they will not 
coincide. Wamin suwaril muallaki, and one of the uh, one of the um, examples of a muallak is a yuhdava jamiul sanad wa yuqalu masalan qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, mm. so like the way that we do, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam bunyal Islamu ala khams. This is muallak. Okay, mm-hmm. but we don't call that weak. The reason why we don't call that weak is because the isnad is established for the hadith and we know which book it's from. It only becomes weak or it only was weak when the hadith were being collected and somebody just came up with Qala Rasulullah Islam ala khams and didn't give the isnad to be checked. That's when a mm-hmm. muallaf is weak. Does that make sense? So we shouldn't confuse uh, what is being said in the Ulumul Hadith book with our practices today? Because our practices, even though it is called Mu'allaq, right, does not have an effect on the Hadith because everybody knows where the Hadith is and they can go and check of the Islam. Does that make sense? Got it. Yes, it makes sense. But for for um for a Muhaddis to say Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu without giving an Islam, that is Mu'allaq. وَمِنْهَا أَنْ يَحْذِفَ إِلَّا الصَّحَابِ أَوْ إِلَّا أو إلا التابعي والصحابي معا أو somebody can say um, عن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بينما نحن عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات يوم عن عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بينما نحن عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات يوم إذ دخل علينا رجل and just you just mentioned عبد الله uh, uh, you know um, what's his name? Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, the, the isnad only has the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Umar ibn Khattab, but the rest of the isnad is missing. That is, um, you know, uh, also known as mu'allaq. Or you can say, عن عبد, عن عبد الله ibn Umar, عن أبيه Umar, عن النبي صلى الله عليه wa sallam, that is also mu'allaq. So, mm-hmm. basically, mu'allaq is missing of anyone waminha um uh, is missing of anyone from the beginning of the isnad okay got it um so ayahdhafa jami'u sanad and then the second one is wamin ayahdhafa illa sahabi meaning that the entire sanad is missed right other than the sahabi so he says qala umar ibn khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu uh, mm-hmm. So the Sahabi is mentioned. Or oh, the entire Sanad is missed out other than the Tabi'i and the Sahabi together. So the Tabi'i and the Sahabi is mentioned, are mentioned, but the others are not mentioned. وَمِنْهَا أَنْ يَحْذِفَ مَنْ حَدَّثَهُ وَيُضِيفَهُ إِلَى مَنْ فَوْقَهُ And another example of the uh, Mu'allaq is to drop the Shaykh of the Rawi, the Rawi Say Bukhari, we we'll use Bukhari here. Imam Bukhari drops his sheikh and he narrates from somebody, uh, from his sheikh's sheikh. So, where you live, ila man huwa fawqahu. So, for example, like in this example here, if we were to um, drop it here, yes. And we will say right, and we were to drop this person here, Imam Bukhari, and then he directly narrates from this person, mm-hmm. then um that is also mu'allaq. So that's so that's that's what we understand normally mu'allaq for. But then as I mentioned, even if this person is uh, uh, missed out, and then we, the author, basically, this person or this person is missed out, and the author goes there. Or Tabi is missed out, and the author says, "Qala Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu taala." All of these are examples of muallaq providing that the isnad is missing from the beginning of the isnad and it is the author that is doing that those are the two conditions that the miss has to the drop has to start from the beginning of the isnad and it is the author who is actually doing the 
dropping, right? And mm-hmm. the reason why the second condition is important is it's going to come because of the of the um, fear of tajlis. Okay. Any questions mm-hmm. before we move on? No. Okay. فَإِنْ كَانَ مَنْ فَوْقَهُ شَيْخًا لِذَلِكَ الْمُصَنِّفِ قَدْ أُخْتُلِفَ فِيهِ هَلْ يُسَمَّ تَعْلِيقًا أَوْ لَا وَالصَّحِيحُ فِي هَذَا التَّفْصِيلِ And if the person that is above the person that is missed out is also the sheikh, is also the sheikh of that author, then there is an ikhtilaf, difference of opinion. Hal you summa ta'aliqan awla? Is this called ta'aliq or is it called tadlis? Bussahihu fi hada at tafsil. And the, uh, the sahih opinion is that there is more details on this. So let me explain tadlis to you. Tadlis will come. And tadlis is one of those things that you need to remember what it is because uh, a lot of uh, uh, stuff depends on that. Tadlis is, I mean, there are four or five different types of Tadlis, but the basic meaning of Tadlis is when a narrator misses out his sheikh and narrates from his sheikh's sheikh, When a narrator misses out his sheikh and narrates from his sheikh's sheikh, who also happened to be his sheikh as well, and gives the impression, or people get the impression that he has heard from that sheikh. Let me give you an example. That is called tadlis. Mm Give you an example of a tadlis. Let's say, um, let me just get rid of that so you're not looking directly. Look at me. Okay, tadlis. Right, let's say, call it Mosanif. Sheikh one. Mm-hmm. Sheikh two. Right. So the relationship between the Musannif and the Sheikhs is like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sheikh two. Is the teacher. This is the student. Yeah. Yep. And the, this is the, the Musannif is also the student. But also the Musannif is also here. Yeah? yeah. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the the Sheikh, Sheikh one is the student of Sheikh two, but the Musannif is also the student of Sheikh two. Can you see the triangle here? Yes. Example of this will be Imam Abu Hanifa. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Abu Yusuf Muhammad, but Imam Muhammad is also the direct student of Imam Abu Hanifa. Can you see mm-hmm. that's the relationship here? Yeah. Yes. Does that make sense? You have to understand that. Yes, I understand this. So, if the Musannif is Knocking out this person. The question here is that is it tadlis or is it ta'aliq? So we know what ta'aliq is, right? Ta'aliq mm-hmm. is basically when the beginning part of the isnad is missing. 
Okay. Right. So do we call it ta'liq? So straightforward, we can call it ta'liq because the beginning part of the isnad is missing. However, should we call it tadlis because the second rawi in line is also the sheikh of the musannif and the musannif has used um, terminologies, for example, an or qala sheikh or ani sheikh or the people got the impression that because the sheikh, second sheikh is also the teacher that when they see this isnad, right, they don't think that there is somebody else in the uh, uh, there that's missing. And they assume, even though the Musannif did not say that, they assume that the Musannif heard directly from the second sheikh. So it, mm. should that be classed as ta'aliq or should that be classed as tadlis? Tadlis is deception. Does that make sense? So Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani rahmatullahi alayhi say that there is tafsil here. فَإِنْ عُورِفَ بِالنَّسِّ أَوِ الْإِسْتِقْرَائِ أَنَّ فَاعِلَ ذَلِكَ مُضَلِّسٌ قُضِيَ بِهِ وَإِلَّا فَتَعْلِيقٌ Yeah? If it is known from Nas or through research that the person who does this is an established mudallis, then this practice will be called tadlis. And if it is not known and if it cannot be established that this person practices tadlis, then we call it ta'liq. So it depends on um, the rawi, the musannifs, um, uh, what we called track record. If the musannif mm -hmm. has got a, uh, a penchant for uh, lying about his shuyukh or giving a wrong impression about his shuyukh and he's been branded as a mudallis, so for him to do that, um, then that will be, uh, providing that he doesn't use the word sima and he uses, because a tad, the, the tadlis is, a mudallis is an ana, when they say an an, uh, is not accepted. The only time a mudallis is uh, the why it is accepted is when they say sami'atu or haddathana, expressive terms. So if you're right. saying an an, then we either we call this tadlis and we reject it, or if there isn't a track record of doing tadlis, then we basically accept it and say that it is ta'aliq. Does that make sense? A uh, few questions. Can it be yes. both at the same time or no? Could it be both so, technically? Yeah, so so are you are you saying like so this this is this is the question. There is we could make a question and answer versions of this. Like have you seen uh Maulana um see, where the, uh, you know there's an Indian scholar Molana Anwar something but uh, Khashani the right of Zadu Talibin he basically writes everything out as question and answer there is actually a question here and that is, that is the question is if it is possible for the ta'aliq to also be a mu'dal the mu'allaq hadith to be also a mu'dal at the same time can right. it be possible for the Mu'allaq hadith to also be a mudallas hadith at the same time. That's the question. Mm -hmm. And yes. Imam Ibn Hajar where in the above question, he said that it is possible for a Mu'allaq to be a, uh, a mu'adal at the same time. Here is basically saying, no, it can't be both of them at the same time. It has to be either or. Okay. Got and the it. reason why is because ta'aliq is tolerated. Tadlis is not tolerated. And um, because they're contradictory, mm -hmm. we need to establish which one is and, and basically say this is either mudallas or this is either mu'allaq. But what can't happen is they can't coexist together. Can you right. see what's happening here? Yes. So this question is born out of the previous question. That if you can do that, yeah. then can you do that this here? And he's saying no. Does that make sense? Makes sense. وَإِنَّمَا ذُكِرَ التَّعَلِيقُ فِي قِسْمِ الْمَرْدُودِ لِلْجَهْلِ بِحَالِ الْمَحْضُوفِ You see? Um, by saying وَإِنَّمَا he's trivializing it. The, the only reason why the ta'aliq has been mentioned in the qism of mardud is because uh, we don't know the situation of the omitted person. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the only reason why we mentioned it. 
right? Not because in and of itself is a problem and that the isnad is wrong, but just that we don't know. That is opposed to uh, knowing that somebody is a known mudallas who's who's known to deceive. Does that make sense? Makes sense, yeah. And this is why I'm I'm uh, I basically made that caveat at the beginning that so it says وَقَدْ يُحْكَمُ بِالصِّحَّةِ إِنْ عُرِفَ that uh, once we know the 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 hal of the rawi, we can declare the hadith mm-hmm. to be sahih, right? بِأَيَّجِي أَمُسَمَّنْ مِنْ وَجْهٍ آخَرٍ that the uh, the name is mentioned in another isnad, right? Once we know mm. the name of that person, then the hadith is is sahih. You see, so this is the this is the caveat that I made at the beginning that mardud is just a heuristic device, you know, right. which can include within it, within itself something which is temporarily uh, um, problematic because we don't know and our knowledge of it is suspended, or something which is inherently diseased and problematic that we have to... It's a heuristic device. It's an art rather than a science. Mm. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Okay, so the next mas'ala that uh, that is coming up is called mas'ala to ta'adil ala al-ibham. Mas'ala to ta'adil ala al-ibham, which we will not be going into... Um, uh, uh, today because it is a, a kind of difficult and we've run out of time and is uh, nearly Maghrib time mm-hmm. now but i just like to mention that there won't be a class next week because I'm away on travelling so we will resume okay. the class on the 8th inshallah is that okay? Inshallah. yep that's fine are Thank there any so more much. questions? no questions and I was wondering if Hussein Hussein are you here? Yes, Malala. I'm sorry, I joined a little bit late. Okay. Do you have any questions? No. Um, I mean, why? Why I can't? Why um, was able to join? Anything? I think I've understood. Okay. Okay. Um, so more important than this is the discussion of tadlis, which is coming, which is quite complicated. So, inshallah, once we do um, so on the eighth masala to ta'adil al ibham, then we'll go to the masala of tadlis and spend a bit of time on that um, and inshallah uh, then we can move forward okay I will see you in uh, a fortnight's time inshallah Inshallah. Okay, on, just, just, quick, just quickly I know you messaged saying um, you might have some questions or you wanted to speak to me about Umrah or something like that so I'm, I mean, yeah we could take that off a chance. yeah just give me a call whenever okay, okay. okay. assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum